Hi guys! Yes, I'm still alive. And yes, I had a heart attack. Pretty significant one. Um, it happened on July 5th, early, early, early morning. Probably about 3.30 or 4.30 a.m. So I'm going to take you back before that though. So a lot of you know that I have not felt good probably since I had COVID last year. Um, I never really recuperated with the breathing issue. So I kind of blew it off as to I just need to stop smoking. <laughs> we all do, right? And going into January and March, I noticed it was really bad when I would get up to do things and I was out of breath uh, more than usual. So I did my retreat at the beach with my fellow artists. Y'all know who you are. Love you guys. Mean it. Um, ended up with having piriformis syndrome that week as well. Um, it's the muscle that crosses over your sciatic nerve. And when it's inflamed, it really is painful. It's hard to walk. So I spent a lot of time in my room at the beach um, resting because I was taking a lot of pain meds. Um, not, you know, hanging out with the girls and not having a few drinks and just not being social at all because I just didn't feel good. That on top of um, not being able to breathe right, Alan and Shelly and Vicki and Brian and Susan and Nate and everybody chipped in and helped us so very, very much. I appreciate you guys and you know I love every single one of you with all my heart. Um, they helped me pull it off and when I got home I was totally exhausted. I did manage to get everything put away from the retreat. Um, sorted out things, got rid of things, packed up just in case I decided to do another retreat someday, packed up a few things. But I've just been, I was just taking it easy. So the week before July 4th, um, I wasn't feeling good. You know, staying up kind of late, watching TV, getting, sleeping in till noon. Um... I started getting what I thought was heartburn and this was the Wednesday, Friday and Sunday before my heart attack that I had gotten these little bouts of heartburn that were different. I mean I've never had heartburn so I didn't know how, how to associate it with the word heartburn. Um, even when I was pregnant I never had heartburn. <laughs> so. I kind of blew it off thinking it was heartburn. I would take some meds and wait for it to pass. So the late morning after July 4th, which would have been July 5th, about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up with that radiating pain again. And I thought, oh, maybe if I burp, I will feel better. So I came out here to my studio, um, which is in my garage, my porage, cracked open a Coke, thinking that would settle my stomach, um, took a couple sips off my Coke, and I think that made it worse. Um, it was awful. It was this constant pressure, not like an elephant sitting on your chest, but it was a pressure with the radiated uncomfortable feeling in my jaw. It's so hard to explain it, guys. Um, and then I felt something weird going on like under my arm, under my left arm. And I thought, holy cow, this is bad because I've never had this. This isn't going away this time. Like there was no relief at all. So I started to walk towards the stairs and it was like someone had turned up my temperature to like 200 degrees and the sweat was just pouring off of me. I mean, I could see it dripping off of me onto the floor. Um, at that point, I had gotten really scared. 
I walked in the house. I turned on our bedroom light because Alan was already in bed, little bug, and said, honey, there's something wrong with me. Um, I'm just, I don't know what's wrong with me, and I'm going like this, trying to wipe the sweat off, and I'm like, get me a cold washcloth, please, just get me a cold washcloth, and I'm wiping my face, and as soon as I would wipe it, it was soaking wet again, and I just looked at him, and he's staring at me, dumbfounded, because, you know, I woke him up, and I said, I think I'm having a heart attack. At that point, it was all systems go. Um, I'm like trying to com compose myself enough to not freak him out. Um, but I did walk into the living room and I sat on the couch and I said, call 911, please call 911. I think I'm having a heart attack. This is something's wrong with me. I, I can't fix this. So, not sure what he did, but he did get the phone. He called 911. Of course, you know, they got to talk to you, asking him all kinds of questions, and I'm just wanting him to be quiet because at that point you're so stressed out. Um, and then they finally showed up about 15 minutes later, I think it was. And they hooked me up to their EKG machine, um, put the pulse ox on my finger. I don't think that worked. And I think it didn't work because I put mica powder on my fingernails. So I think it blocked it. Um, but he said to me, I think you're having a heart attack because the EKG was all fluky. He gave me four baby aspirin, told me to chew them up. Put a nitro pill under my tongue. The fire department showed up and they came in with a chair. I mean, we're talking like 10, 15 minutes of just sitting in the house before they took me out to the ambulance. And I mean, it was bad, guys. I'm not going to kid you. It's, it still scares me when I think about it because it's, I could have died. The um, wait for them to get there, I didn't have any baby aspirin in the house. Um, I do now. I also have nitro pills. Um, they put me in a chair. They took me down the stairs to the sidewalk. Put me on the bed. Took me out to the ambulance. Stuck me in the ambulance pulled me back out of the ambulance because when they came, this is the only funny thing I can get out of this. When they came, they had opened the ambulance doors with the lights on and they were parked by my mimosa tree. Every bee that was on that tree ended up in that ambulance while they were in the house working on me. So when they brought me out and they put me in and saw all the bees, they pulled me back out and I'm on this bed in the middle of the road by my driveway and they're trying to figure out how they're going to get the bees out of the ambulance so they could get me in there. They didn't want me to get stung. So they grabbed their oxygen tanks and they blew those bees out of there as fast as they could. It was probably five, ten minutes. I'm not kidding you. It was a long time. And I, they had me laying flat, and I'm just let me sit up, just let me sit up, because I couldn't. I was so uncomfortable. So they got the, the bees out of the ambulance, shoved me in there, and they're banging on the door, go, go, go. So they were checking my wires, making sure I was on the machine. And I look down and there's a bee on my toe, on my big toe. And I just jokingly said, huh, you missed one. <laughs> so they got them. They 
got them off of me, and I think they killed them. I don't know what they did with them, but at that point, I really didn't care. I was like, hurry up and get me to the hospital. Well, they took me to Wake Med, to the Heart Center, which is an hour drive for us. So we got there. It's 26 miles, but with traffic, it's always an hour drive. Um, we got there. I think it was 35 minutes it took us to get there. Ambulance, sirens were blaring. They're flying through red lights. It was very scary. And I'm, of course, wanting to sit up. That's like, unbuckle me, unbuckle me, unbuckle me. They, I said, you can keep the one around my waist. I don't care. Just let me sit up. So we get to the emergency room. They take me in. All these doctors and nurses, everybody was waiting for us. The one doctor comes up to me and she says, are you in pain? What's your pain level? And I said, it's not really pain. It's just, it wasn't pain. It was, I don't know how to explain it. It was just uncomfortable. Like I was breathing heavy, yes. Um, I didn't have chest pain. I just had that heartburn feel. The radiated pain, I guess, is what, it hurt here in my jaw. So they gave me some morphine, didn't touch it. They put me on the machine. I don't think I was in that emergency department more than 10 minutes. And she said, you have something rare going on with your heart. So we're going to take you to the cath lab. I was like, thank God. Because I know anyone that's ever gone to the cath lab has found relief immediately once they get in there and ablate your vessels. So they get me in there. I met my doctor. They were all so nice. Oh my God, everybody was so good to me. I couldn't have asked for a better team to take care of me. Um, they get me in there. Of course, they go through the artery in my groin. Um, went through, put the contrast here. I think it was here. And went into every one of my arteries. Um, so mine was the descending, uh, not the Widowmaker, the one behind it, the descending circumference. I forgot how it's, what it's called. I don't have any paperwork out here to read you anything because I wanted to talk to this from my heart and not from a medical terminology. So it says on some of my notes that they sedated me. I don't remember being sedated. It, I guess I was because I was in there an hour and it only felt like 15 minutes. But they found the blockage. It was 100% blocked. Lucky I didn't die. Um, they opened it up. They put a stent in. And after they got that flowing, they went and checked my other arteries, which were all clear. No plaque buildup perfectly clear arteries. He said they were all beautiful arteries, just that one. Which leads me to believe it could be something genetic. My, I've lost my grandfather. I wasn't even born yet. My grandfather died from a massive heart attack when he was in his 50s. And of course, my dad had heart problems and my grandma had heart problems. So it could be something genetic. But we don't know. I threw a clot. So, I'm not going to say it's virus related or anything, but it could be. I don't know. So, once they got me cleared, the doctor looked down at me and he said, How you feeling? And I said, Oh my God, I'm 100% better. He says, Well, he says, You had a little episode, which I don't remember the episode because I was sedated. <laughs> so, he said, We'll do an echocardiogram on you tomorrow and see how your heart looks. So they took me to the ICU unit. It was 8.55. I will never forget looking at that clock. 8.55 in the morning, they took me into an ICU room, ICU room, and that's where I met Courtney, my nurse. I had four nurses while I was there. Best girls ever. Um, I couldn't ask for better care. She brought me in, they cleaned me down with their antiseptic 
washcloths and got me into the air bed, got me hooked up to machines and gave me some meds. I had IVs. I had IV in both arms. I was a bruised, battled woman. <laughs> Speaking of bruises, like when you're on blood thinners and you get bruises like this and you don't remember where you got them. I've got a great big one down here that I must have bumped my hip. But that's all part of being on blood thinners, I guess. I'm going to have to start writing down every time I bump myself so I know where that bruise came from. Um, they had a tr trouble getting my blood pressure to come up. My blood pressure was... 65 over 42, 75 over, you know, everything was low, low, low. So they had given me some special medicine to bring my blood pressure up, which I was on for 20, 36 hours, at least 36 hours. They stopped it the morning that I was being discharged, so... Um, so then they came in to do the echocardiogram on me, Dylan, young kid, bless his heart, <laughs> I'd lay on my side and he had to get up under my breasts and I was uncomfortable, <laughs> I'm sure he was too, <laughs> but we found out that I have ejection fraction of 45%, which that means my heart is not pumping out enough blood to my body. So, I'm not exactly sure if that will get better over time. It could. My doctor says it could. My the primary says it could. My cardiologist doesn't really say anything because he's a PA. He's not a doctor. The first appointment I had was with a PA. Should have been my cardio doctor. But I didn't know who I was seeing because I didn't pay any attention to the paperwork. So anyways, um, so I am taking um, a certain blood thinner for the stent, a baby aspirin, and Farsiga now. Farsiga is a very expensive medication. It's like $500 a month. It's hard because I don't have an income right now. And Alan covers the bills for the house. I try to pay for my own stuff, you know. But I'm not working. I've been off work for over a month. And thank you to everyone who bought paint from me. <laughs> um, I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I paid for my first ego. Um, I have a hospital bill. I have a hospital, you know, a ambulance bill, a physician's bill for the ER, they're all billed separately, so we haven't paid anything yet because I want final bills with itemization, I guess, so I can see that things weren't double charged or anything. It's just me. I used to be an accountant, so <laughs> I like to look at everything. Um, so anyway, the first night I was there, I had a traveling nurse named Claire. Uh, my back was killing me from laying, and I was not allowed to move for... They took the thing out of my artery and my groin at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I had to lay flat. I had to lay for an hour and not move at all. And once they took that out, and I didn't bleed, so then they said, okay, you can roll to your side but you have to keep that leg still. Like I wasn't allowed to like cross my leg over. So my back was still like really bad. I mean, I was crying about my back for at least 24 hours. So I had this Claire, she's from Rochester, New York. I loved her. <laughs> Ellen loved her. She came in with lidocaine patches and got my back and put one on my front of my chest because my breastbone hurt, which is weird. They couldn't figure out why my breastbone hurt because I didn't have CPR. So it's, I, it's something to do with my floating rib. When it gets out of place, it makes my breastbone hurt. So it's just a problem I've had for a while. And she gave me a little something 
I don't know what it was called. I even looked on my sheet to see what that drug was called, but it was nighty night, no pain. So I, we had, that's probably why I really liked her. <laughs> she made sure that I had something to drink all the time, and you know I had to use the bedpan, which I didn't want to do, and uh, she was good about that. So the following morning, I had Letitia cutest girl ever she was 38 weeks pregnant she comes into my room and it's like belly in my face and I'm like oh, you're pregnant can I you know it's just automatic I want to touch can I I rubbed her belly and uh, I and I told her I said I said to her baby you got the best mama ever <laughs> she was so good to me she gave me a bath and um, brought me whatever I was asking for, kept track of my um, meds, you know, like if I didn't feel good, she made sure I got something. Um, but the people that come in to see you when you have a heart attack is crazy. I had psych there to make sure that I was mentally stable, <laughs> which I wasn't. <laughs> um, I complained about everything that's going on in the world and said I'm stressed out and it was just, I think, maybe the meds talking, you know, like it brings up things that you have behind your behind your mind. It's just it all comes to fruition. But I was still in pain. Um, my heart was still fluttery. I still felt woozy as hell. Just not feeling good at all. So they brought me ginger ale, and I did have some crackers, and the only thing I could eat was fruit. I was so nauseous. So, so nauseous. But I was not nauseous when I was having the heart attack, which is weird, because that would be one of your symptoms. Um, and that nauseousness stayed until last week. So I don't know if maybe it was the stent thinner that my body had to get used to, because they had already started me on that. Um, it may have made me nauseous until my body got used to it. I don't know. So. I didn't really eat while I was there. It was just like fruit and ginger ale. Ellen did bring me a sweet tea, which I nursed for two days because it didn't taste right. And you guys know I love my sweet tea. <laughs> it goes everywhere with me. It's my it's my hummingbird food, as Shelly calls it. <laughs> but that night I had another nurse called, her name was Brittany. This girl knew her stuff. She explained everything to me about what happened to me, um, what's going to happen going on forward, um, telling me, you know, you might feel good, but you've got to recoup for at least six weeks. You had a heart attack. You can't go back to work doing what you were doing, because they all knew I was a YouTuber at that point. Um, they Actually, some of them were watching my channel while they were on their, out at the desk on their breaks and stuff, and they would come in and say, oh, I love this painting. <laughs> that was fun. But, um, and if they're watching, I love you guys. <laughs> You're so good to me. Um, so, the following morning, Letitia come in after I had Brittany that night, and Letitia said, um, they're coming to see you today. And I said, oh yeah? She says, yeah, because you're doing really good. They might let you go home. They're going to let me go home? I've only been here two days. She goes, yeah, maybe they'll let you go home. So they came in. The nurse, the, I don't know, I guess it was a PA. I think her name was Marguerite Swick. can't remember for sure. But she sat down and explained the ejection fraction to me and... Uh, they wanted at 55% at least, and mine was at 45, but it's at 45, it's not lower. That I don't know if that could change and get worse or could change and get better, but I won't know that until they have another echocardiogram where they check to see if my if I have a little gurgle in my heart when it pumps the blood. That's scary. Um, I'm terrified to go to cardiologist now. <laughs> I. Um, I have to take Xanax to get through a day when I have to start thinking about it because I'm scared. I really am. I'm blessed because 
I didn't die. But I all thought about was, oh my God, what would Alan have done with all these heart supplies? That's what I was thinking. Like, what would he have done with all the paint in the paint mixing room? All these art supplies. That's all I worried about was, what would he have done with all my stuff? That would have been such a burden on him, you know? And so now that I'm home and I'm like, I'm not buying anything else. I need to use up everything that I have before I buy anything new. The only thing that I'll buy is if I need stir sticks or glue or varnish or whatever but I am not buying any more canvas I am not buying any more jars I have so much <laughs> so so much and I have no energy to use any of it because I'm not 100% I don't think I ever will be so I'm taking one day at a time Some days I feel great and want to do something, and I can't do much. Like Saturday, Alan was home. well. Actually, Alan took two days off last week and painted the ceiling in the foyer for me. That's where I'm going to be hanging everybody's artwork that I took out of my mixing room. So it's going to be like a artist foyer, <laughs> foyer, and. Um, bless him. I don't know I do it without him. Um, so he got the ceiling painted and finished that up Saturday. So I went in and with my skim, with my joint compound to skim coat over where we took wallpaper down, where it took a little paint off here and there, down to the drywall. So I thought, oh, I can do that. Just swipe. So I did that for about 10 minutes. That was it. I was done. So I was gonna go in and do a second coat today and I thought, you know, I'm gonna take a day off and rest because yeah, I just, I'm stressed. The fear, the fear is there. I'm being real honest with you guys. I um, I have my, my Vicky that I talk to as much as I can. I called my mom today and talked to her for a few hours. She's not doing good. She's got a little dementia started, I think. Shelly's busy moving, but she does check in on me. I love her. And Brian was on vacation, but he's not good with words, but he does ask me how I'm doing. Love you, Brian. Um, I've gotten cards from a few of my viewers. I appreciate that. Flowers from my special girls. <laughs> My island was a garden of beauty. Thank you, Joy and Karen and Sarah and Kelly and Tracy and Mina and Fluid Art Co., Billy and Shelly. And then I got this basket full of goodies from Janice and Julie and the uh, Artist Haven gang. I appreciate all of you. Um, so now I just wait. I have a new cardiologist that I'll be seeing in October. He was TJ's cardiologist that I just, I loved him. He was great with TJ. So I think I could be comfortable with him and he is a doctor, not a PA. So I'm going to try him out in October, but I will keep going to the PA until that transition takes place because I do need to be checked and um, monitor to make sure that I'm not getting worse, I guess. Um, I've lost 
10 pounds because I was so nauseous and now I don't eat hardly anything that isn't good for me because I'm watching my salt um, I don't think we've had very much red meat <laughs> mostly salads and chicken and Good things. So now, um, I'm not going to be able to do a lot of stuff that I used to do. So I guess my channel's going to kind of be um, blooms with spinning. I've got a ton of ornaments to do. Christmas is coming. So I want to work on those. I have probably 500 ornaments sitting in two bins so I've got a lot of things I can play with um, I'm gonna dabble a little bit with some alcohol inks and I'm gonna dabble with some resin things that I don't have to lift and tilt but at some point I'm going to have to be able to paint again because I have large canvases in here like four foot canvases that I want to paint. I don't want someone to tell me I can't. So, I don't know, maybe it could be something that Ellen and I could do together so that you can tilt it. I don't know, we'll see. So, I want you to know the warning signs, guys. Girls, ladies, Please. Our heart attacks are different than guys. Now that I know, every little twinge I get here kind of makes me nervous, but I have to tell myself, it's not your heart. It's just gas. <laughs> but if you ever get that radiating up into your jaw, and it doesn't go away right away with a burp or a change in your movement. I know a lot of people get heartburn. This is, I thought it was heartburn because I never had heartburn, ever. So pay attention to that. If you question it, chew some baby aspirin. If it goes away, and later comes back, it's probably your heart. Another thing, if you're having trouble breathing now, let's say you get up to do stuff and you're just breathless, and you just your chest feels heavy, because that's what I was having, this heaviness in my chest. Like, I, And I was a smoker, so I blew it off as a smoker, which I am quitting, by the way. I'm cutting back. I'm getting to a point where I can just slap a patch on and I should be okay. I'm not done yet it's very hard I tried when I first got home I tried to quit but when they stressed me out with the whole Farsiga thing and all these tests that came back weird and I had to take pills for that that stressed me out and I just smoked because I didn't know what else to do I do take a Xanax when I need one but it's not it's not bringing me down you know what I mean I can have a cigarette and just go and relax and I know it's not good for me I know so don't lecture me because I know I've heard it from everybody <laughs> even my mother she's not even going to get me my cigarettes anymore <laughs> from New York um, anyways if you're having that heaviness in your chest and you're having trouble breathing and you just don't feel good make an appointment with your doctor have them run a BNP test on you. BNP. That will tell them if something's not right with your heart. Um, I didn't have one of those until I went for my checkup. And the normal range is, I think, 14 to 30. I'm not positive on that. Mine was 555. Which puts me in the congestive heart failure category. Congestive heart failure. 
Will it get better? Probably not. Will I be able to paint again? Small stuff. That's where I'm at in my head right now. If I can just do something to keep my creativeness going, yeah. Um, it's scary. It's scary. So, a lot of people have asked how they can help me, what can they do for me. Um, I have a very special artist friend and friends that got together and set up a GoFundMe for me to help me pay my medical bills because I'm not working. That link will be uh, below in the description. Uh, it's Friends of Christina Welch. And um, my PayPal me, PayPal link will be below. And my Etsy shop if you want to buy paint to support me. Um, I can't mix right now, but I have a lot of paint that is available that I mixed before the retreat, so I was fully stocked. And then I had paint left over from the retreat, so I, some of them are overstocked. <laughs> but I'm not asking for you guys to donate or anything, but if you want to help me out, I'd appreciate it so much. I just don't want to put the whole burden on Alan. I'm so used to making my own money and paying my own bills and asking him to pay for that first Sega. You know, the first time, because I didn't have any money. And, uh, not good. So. So yeah, if you want to help me out, I would appreciate you so very much. Um, if you have any questions, could you email them to me so I don't, they don't get lost? Send those questions to Christina Welch Art at yahoo.com. Um, send me a message on Messenger on Facebook. I'm here to answer anything you want to know. I'm wide open. Um, there's another artist that has the same thing I have. She totally gets it. I pray for her. I pray for everybody lately. Whew, do I pray? But I love you guys. Thanks for hanging with me for this little bit of time and let me tell you what happened. I'm really hoping I can make a comeback.